and welcome to Reef Talk. I'm Scott Anderson with Mile High Reefers. I'm Steve Ryder with Ryder Tube Reef. And this is our first web talk show that we're doing to kind of introduce everybody to us and the reefing community. So today we're going to talk about how we got into the hobby. So Steve, how'd you get into this hobby? That's a really interesting question. Um, <clears throat> I never really wanted to get into the saltwater aquarium hobby. Uh, I had a freshwater tank that was a five-gallon tank when I was in high school, right? Really basic, and it wasn't too much fun. It's just kind of one of those things that just kind of sits on your desk, and you do your water changes. That's about it. 20 years passed by, and the kids came along, and we'd be in the store, and they'd go nuts for the fish. So I thought maybe it would be fun to get a five-gallon aquarium again just for the heck of it. Um, didn't really want to have the extra responsibility because we already have a mini zoo in the house, but I thought it would be fun for them and they really enjoyed it. And we loved going to the Shed Aquarium in Chicago and I always wanted to have saltwater aquarium, but it was just too much work. So I thought maybe I'll get a larger aquarium because the five gallon was a little too small. I wound up getting, um, a nano cube, 28 gallon during the purchase. I thought, this was a bad idea. I'm wasting my money. I'm not in, even really into fish. What am I doing? That was a freshwater aquarium. I liked it so much. I thought, I wonder if I should get into saltwater. And I dismissed that thought instantly because it just seemed like too much work and I was too afraid. Um, then when all the freshwater fish died, I resisted the urge to buy some more. Knowing I really wanted to try my hand at saltwater, I did. So the 28 gallon went to a 75 salt water, now to the 125. The rest is history. What about you? So I started off in freshwater about 16 years old or so. Um, had multiple freshwater tanks. My problem was with freshwater, I kind of got bored, right? I mean, eventually you get to the point where you're done. You throw some plastic plants in and some tetras and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And I, I mean, I went clear up to Oscars and stuff like that, but I it just never was able to keep my attention. So I'd get something pretty nice and then I'd get bored of it and then the tank would start looking like crap. And um, So I did that for quite a while. Finally, I started seeing some of the reef stuff starting to come along. This is the late 90s, I wanted one but couldn't afford one but by like 2006 i decided i was going to really get into it that's when i started my 29 gallon tank and if you've seen some of my videos i've talked about this before but i bought a bad salinity gauge when i set that tank up originally so my tank did good for like the first six months and then for like eight years well six years my tank couldn't do crap i mean i could keep a clownfish alive but that was about it every piece of coral i put in there died all of that um and it was the most frustrating thing um eventually youtube started coming along and they all these people like um Ricketts reef and new york stilo and all those guys were putting videos out and i started learning a lot more about the hobby because before that there wasn't a whole lot of resources available and that's where I really started doing good again. Um, I bought my 90 gallon, um, uh, another salinity gauge came with that. And that's when I figured out that my salinity was for, so far off. I had no idea why, because every time I check it, I was at 1.026 and then um, everything I put in there would die, I could, except for my clownfish. So yeah, one little gauge like that made the complete difference and by getting good water and a good tank and all that, and, I mean, I've done relatively well since then. So went from a 90 gallon to a 210, and I think that's where I'm going to be for quite a while. <laughs> so how old were you roughly when you had that 90, when you got the 90? Oh, I had to be about 30 when I bought that. Okay. So when you, you said 16? Yep. Uh, is, that's when you started, roughly? Well, that's when I started freshwater. Freshwater, right. Freshwater, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't get um, I didn't get a tank until our saltwater tank until 2006 um it was like february of 2006 when i bought that so i would have been what 24 years old then i was born in 82 so yeah nice so <clears throat> you like salt water more than the fresh water i would never go back to fresh water yeah no offense to the fresh water people but that's just what we prefer um yeah i enjoy watching my saltwater tank man i 
I, I'll just lay on the couch and I'd rather watch that than TV. In fact, that's what I do. I didn't find myself doing that with the fresh water. I mean, I did, but not as much as the, with the salt water. Um, the salt water is a lot more work, um, but they're both good. I just really prefer the salt water more. Yeah, and you know, I'm not even sure salt water is that much more work other than mixing up salt water. If you want to do a right. fish only, if you want to do a fish only in a small tank, I don't think it's really any more work than mixing the salt water. No, that is true. That is true. Once you get the tank to a good level, um, I guess, I guess I meant to say when things go wrong, right? And you have to do your quarantine tanks and multiple water yep. changes in the quarantines. But here's the thing. I mean, we should be doing that with fresh water, anyways, and we just don't. Yeah. Your cheap and expensive tanks. But you look at these guys with really high end freshwater fish. They're absolutely doing the quarantine stuff. Yeah, that's true. I never did so, that. I never did the quarantines no. with the fresh water. No, I didn't either, but I mean that's why I had ick outbreaks in fresh water. Hmm. Luckily I never had that, but I certainly got it when I started the saltwater aquariums. Um so with that little uh segue, where did you learn about the saltwater aquariums? Cuz I know for me, um now that I know what I know, I got screwed over pretty bad by the uh, local reef store guys who didn't know what ick was and they tried to sell me on garlic and all that stuff that we discussed so yep. where did you do most of your uh learning uh reef stores or what well early on i mean i've talked to my lfs but i mean they could never really spend the time with you to get you where you need to be to be a good reefer i bought books and stuff but it never really got me where I wanted to be and that's part of why I failed for so long with my 29 gallon tank it was really YouTube that got me where I wanted to be now the fun part about YouTube is what's good information what's bad information like the garlic I hear tons of YouTube videos where people are telling you to treat your food with garlic I mean absolutely do that if your fish has ick but that's only gonna make your fish want to eat more mm-hmm I mean, it's just, it's not going to kill the egg parasites, and that's just a myth that keeps going around. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where I just watched tons of YouTube videos. I found the people I trusted, kind of listened to what they said, took what worked, and went with that. And what failed, I kind of move on. I mean, I still have lots of failures. How about you? How'd you learn all this? Uh, <clears throat> pretty much everything you just said. The local reef store, they didn't want to spend much time with me. Um, one of the guys actually did. Um, but you know, a couple of the guys, they, uh, they kind of had the whole mindset of like, I'm better than you and I don't want to really take the time, <clears throat> but buy this filter or protein skimmer yep. for $400, you know, whatever. So, <clears throat> uh, my fish started to die rapidly. I didn't know what was going on. I had the water tested at a few reef stores and they said it came back just perfect. The parameters are great. Um, no one knew what was going on. I was going out of my mind. Um, and it, I remember this, a couple customers came in this local reef store where I bought all my first stuff in the beginning and they were the so-called experts and professionals like, Oh, John's here. Uh, let's ask him. He didn't even know he, this guy was like, uh, sounds like a predator in your aquarium. What do you got? You got, what do you got in there? Yeah. Yeah. The, the predator was ick or actually it was marine velvet. They had no idea. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I did a search for, uh, fish dying not sure why <clears throat> i came across a lot of videos and i've said this before but i came across your video with your uh most recent tank where you had the problem you did a video on it and i thought wow this sounds really familiar to the problem i'm having but i don't see anything in the water let me just try it out so i came across your video that's how, kind of how scott and i met uh i started doing videos actually my first video was about ick parasite i just thought i would post something up to um, help other people out like what scott did and i didn't i didn't know much about aquariums and i didn't even have a video camera at the time i put my iphone on top of a cheerios box it was a honey nut cheerios box and i just filmed myself and that video did really well so i thought wow yeah. i i was able to help a lot of people maybe i'll start a channel the rest is history so i learned by youtube and going to forums. You know what? A lot of the forums have uh, yeah. 
jerks on them. I'll just say it. I'm honest. Jerks well, in a lot of, and but it's the same problem in forums where you're running into iffy information. Right. This is a okay. hobby that no one's really a professional at. There's people that are a lot better at it than others, of course. But um, there are people that will stand their ground. I do, but I only stand my ground if I know that it's correct. If I don't know, I'll right. admit it. But. I don't really go to the forums that much. Um, n nothing, nothing, nothing bad about forums, but I'm just saying most of the people tend to shoot you down right away, and I don't like that. Yep, I'm with you on that. Unfortunately, with the forum, it's just so easy to sit behind your computer and be a jerk on those. So <laughs> I, I hate that part of it, right? Because right. I mean, you're almost you're basically anonymous on there. It's kind of like the YouTube comments we get. Right, so. yeah. Um. So YouTube seems to be, it is, um, a warmer environment, nicer yep. people. Um, my subscribers, your subscribers, they're all very nice, willing to help each other out. It's just a lot more fun. It's just a lot of fun. Um, you get to be personal with them. They can see you. You can demonstrate stuff with videos. Um, you can comment. You can answer the questions. That's another thing, as I've said in the past, I cannot stand, and you know what I'm going to say, um, people who do not respond to comments. you got a question, they yep. don't respond. Um, so whatever, but yeah, forums, I kind of steer clear from or of, uh, I just spend a lot of time on YouTube. Yeah. I'm with you. The big thing I like about YouTube is I can kind of see somebody's tank and how it's progressing. Right. If I see somebody's tank and it looks complete crap, I know I don't necessarily <laughs> want to listen to what he's saying, but when you got somebody with a really nice tank, who's had long-term success with it. That's the kind of guy you want to listen to. Right. Even if you don't necessarily believe or agree with everything he says, it's good to see what he's doing, why he's doing it and listen and think about what he's doing. It's not necessary believing everything they do, but at least kind of get ideas of what other successful reefers are doing. I mean, and, the, and to the other end, I like watching a lot of the new guys' channels that are coming out, right? Yeah, right. And, and I like seeing their tanks grow. I think it's really cool yeah. to do. I really like that part of it. Me too. And what I've said before in a recent video on my channel, uh, you know, uh, don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to Scott. Don't just listen to one guy. Listen to a yep. lot of people and put your yep. fil filters on and find the common denominators. If like a handful of people tend to say the same or similar thing, then use that to narrow down your research and follow through on that. Um, but I will tell you, steer clear of the people who say, um, use garlic to kill ick. I had someone who made a comment on... Uh, someone just commented on uh, one of my YouTube videos and they, <laughs> ma they mentioned you. Nice. Um... Nice video, Steve. You got Scott going on the star. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know. But <laughs> I, I only read the first sentence. There's more to that. Um, but anyway, uh, where was I going with that? What was I saying? Totally um, forgot because I picked up my yeah. phone. What was I saying? Uh, we got stuck on the comment, yeah. <laughs> the I'm comment. sure we'll figure this out after we watch the video. Yeah, I'll remember. You know. <laughs> Anyways, I know we were talking about the ick and some of the comments you've had from that well some someone posted a oh. comment recently by the way there's no editing on this show we're not nope, going to edit not. this none there's none we want to keep it live we want to keep it raw and at times we're going to have um you guys on here with us and we're going to go live once in a while but um right now we're doing this through skype so once in a while we want to invite you guys to be on uh, the three or four way and we're going to have discussions. We want to build this uh, reefing community more and just have like a really cool fun hangout session and we'll post them up on our channels so we can all learn. So that's the deal. So I think I remembered what I was saying with the, uh, the YouTube guy. Uh, he posted some comments, not on a video I did, but he did a video on killing ick and using garlic and that's the way to go. And he said, uh, also, you know, only one of my fish has it. The other guys are fine. I fed him garlic. There's no problem. Uh, so I didn't want to be a jerk on his channel. So I just said, you know, that um, that's actually incorrect. Garlic is just going to entice them to eat. Garlic doesn't kill a parasite. It doesn't kill a flesh-eating parasite. He's like, well, I've been in the reefing for 30 years, and I know. That's fine. That That's cool. I didn't respond to oh. him. I didn't want to make him upset. I just figured, you know, what works for you, that's cool. I didn't want to make anybody mad. 
unfortunately for a reef, I mean, you can get lucky and battle it in the tank. I know that happened to me a little while ago, but for the most part, you've got to treat it with copper and you can't do that in the reef. So you got to get those fish out. Yeah. And I remember when I saw your video, I'm like, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. His tank is really kick ass. So I'm going to trust him. And then when you said, put everybody in a separate quarantine tank, a hospital tank, separate them, get them out. Cause you can only treat them in copper there. You cannot put copper in your display tank. It'll nuke everything and kill your corals and your inverts and all that. And I thought, Oh my God, God, this sucks. I don't have a quarantine and I don't want to go through this hassle. This is just too much work. You know what? Maybe everything will just be fine. Maybe it'll just be fine, but I knew it wouldn't be fine because the fish were dying at an alarming rate. I was literally buying a fish every couple days. I'd get home and my wife would say, I'm sorry, I didn't want to tell you this at work, but someone else died. And then the, the next day, someone else died. I'd go out that night and buy another clownfish. That clownfish would be dead the next day. So the marine velvet was just tearing them to shreds so i finally did what you suggested and it worked and it's, yeah. the, it's the only thing that works yeah and i know i get a, a lot of thumbs down on that first video i did maybe you do too because yeah. people don't like hearing that um i know i mean if you want to try to battle it some of the other ways you might get lucky but for the most part you got to get those fish out and with my tank that's almost a non-possibility at this point so I'm very diligent with quarantine at this point, so I don't have to fight it. It's a very sad thing about that Chevron I just lost, but that's the reason and he didn't go right in. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, see the quarantine tank, uh, that fish for whatever was sick, it died. It could have passed something on to your main tank. Now, when you get to the level that you're at, even with me, 125 gallon, but your tank with the really nice uh, rock scape and all the rock, because I don't have anywhere near the rock that you have. Yep. You don't want to be tearing that down because the fish are smart. They're going to hide. You don't want to do that every time. Uh, and that's what you've got to do. And I think that's why a lot of people say, oh, I'm not doing it. It'll be fine. Yep. Well, it won't be fine. Nope. Um, and I agree. I mean, I don't want to do it either. I mean, the last time I had Ick uh, a while ago, I thought, son of a bitch. I don't. Well, you know what? You got to do what you got to do. Don't even think about it. Just do it. And then yep. you'll have the peace of mind that your tank is cleared. I didn't quarantine an anemone that I brought in. Yeah. And that destroyed me. And you wouldn't even expect that. No. So the water that was – what I did, I, I put it in a separate uh, container with salt water, let it sit in there for five minutes thinking that would be good enough. Yep. Nope. Nope. It came in on a drop of water, whatever. So, Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's the deal. No more corals for me for quite a while. I'm not even using snails or um, shrimp anymore. No cleanup crew for me. That's what I'm saying. Oh, wow. I know that a lot of people probably hate for saying that, but I don't care. I don't, you know, I do the sand bed vacuuming. Uh, yeah, you need a cleanup crew, right? Well, I'm not. I, I just don't want to quarantine those guys that I'm totally not risking. Like, what would you do if you wanted to buy another... You know, you know, I'm still shrimp I'm, or cleanup crew. What would you do? Snails. I'm, I'm still relatively risky. I guess they're going in. I mean, the odds of something coming in on that are just so low. But it does happen. You're yeah. absolutely right. It sucks. I mean, I, and I got to thinking about that today. It's, um, and I don't know if I've mentioned this. I think that Chevron Tang died of marine velvet because of the way it looks and how fast it went and everything, right? And now I'm sitting here thinking, well, crap, that fish was in a tank that I've bought many things out of in the past, coral, all that kind of stuff. Can I even buy a coral out of that tank now? Well, I'm just like, it, But then I start thinking about it. Well, that's going to be every freaking piece of anything I buy. That's right. So, I mean, at this point, with your corals and invertebrates and all that stuff, your risk is incredibly low, but like it happened to you, it happens to other people too. I've seen it. Well, you go to the store yep. and, okay, you've got a, like, the anemone that I bought was in a tank <clears throat> and it was segregated off, but there were a few fish in that tank. And I'm thinking, I don't like, I just have a bad feeling. Like, what if those fish are sick? They're all in the same aquarium. Well, guess what? Yep. It was in that water. It came in on the anemone and I didn't rinse it off good enough, and I brought it in probably on a drop of water. It happened. Um, yeah. 
Same thing with snails. I bought snails in the past. Uh, and that's another reason I, I don't... I, I, I will not use live rock. I won't use live rock. I've got enough beneficial bacteria on my, uh, in my tank where I'll just buy dry rock off the shelf. Even if I was starting a new aquarium from scratch, I would buy dry rock or, uh, well, you could buy live rock, I suppose, because there's not going to be any fish in it for at least six to eight weeks. You should right. let it cycle. Yep. So you're fine there. Um, but you know what? Those of you who are quarantining and if you do have an ick outbreak and you're going to keep your fish, you have to keep your fish for a minimum of six to eight weeks in the quarantine. If you've been eyeing some corals, now is the time to get them because if they do come with parasites, yep. so what? There's no fish in the tank to destroy, so you might as well just get them. Yeah, and unfortunately for the coral side of things, I think it's just going to be I'm going to take that risk and, and hope nothing happens because um, I don't know how else to do it, right? I mean, you buy stuff you buy stuff that comes right out of the ocean. I mean, it can come right. from the ocean. And you buy it from somebody's tank. It can come from anywhere. So, Well, what about the, this? Wouldn't Could you set up like a, a saltwater little tub yep. like a – Yep. Five gallon and just put like a little heater in it with that. Yeah, you, you can absolutely do that. No, um, co no copper, but just, you know, salt water. Would that be fine? You, you'd have to do nope. that. Yeah, it's absolutely. A lot of people are doing that. They're doing quarantine tanks for coral and invertebrates and all that. And that's absolutely what we should all be doing. But it's the same. But it's even worse with the corals and snails and all that to quarantine those guys because they need the right lighting and water flow right. and, conditions and all that kind of stuff. That's even harder to do. Well, don't you have a separate tank for your corals? You've got. What do you I have? do, but it's all connected to my main system. Oh right? yeah, okay. So, so I mean, it. it's all. Yep. Yeah, it's all fed in there. I mean, the risk is slightly lower, but it all runs through. Hmm. Plus, I got fish down there. <laughs> so yeah, Pinky the yellow tank's still down there. So um, he could become the food source too if I stuck yeah, something. There. Definitely right. Uh, speaking of that, let's say that. Um, you do say I'm taking all my fish out of my big aquarium and they're all safe now in the quarantine with copper, but I can't get that one fish. I just can't get them. I can't catch them. Well, that doesn't count as long as that nope. last one is still alive. That's a food nope. source for the parasite. So your six week minimum counter doesn't start until you either catch that fish or it dies. Yeah. And that's a good point because I've done that where I've taken all my fish out and um, I took the blue tang out first and treated him separately and then pulled the other fish out later. And you're dead right. The counter for me didn't start until all those fish were out. Right. And I remember <laughs> you sent me an email or something. You said, well, all the rocks are coming out. I'm like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, I know it's horrible. <laughs> it was bad for me. I had like three Home Depot buckets with like towels on the floor so it wouldn't drip. I'm like, oh, man. And then here comes you with... I don't know how many pounds of rock you've gotten that. That's a couple hundred, yeah. Yeah, but it's a hassle, especially. Um, I love doing all the rock work and the scape, but when you have to tear that apart and you've got the rock just how you like it, you have to start yeah. over again. That sucks. And I broke so many stony corals doing that. That just hurt. Yeah, and then you've got that, and then you've got... Uh, Multiple water changes that you have to do in the hospital tank because there's not enough bacteria to kill all the ammonia and everything that goes into it. So you're talking like what every other day, especially if you've got all your fish in there, the larger bio load, you got to get rid of more of the water. It's like this sucks. Five to ten gallons every two or three days of a change. What the hell am I? Oh, man, I hate it for six weeks. You blow through a lot of salt. So those of you who are thinking about starting a saltwater aquarium, maybe don't do it. Yeah. Well, one thing I'd like to ask our viewers about is what they think about my idea of the quarantine tank, right? Where I'm adding a sand bed in there and some biological oh, yeah. And it works really good from to give me a nitrogen cycle in there, so I'm not doing water changes as much. The other thing, at least in my head, that makes sense is by doing that, we have less of an ammonia issue because – you do a water change on that tank, you'll never get all the ammonia out because even if you do a 30% water change, you're only going to get 30% of the ammonia out of there. Right. So you got this constant buildup. You're always doing the water changes, and the first time that fish goes to the bathroom, it's releasing more ammonia into the water. So that's something I've been doing and been relatively successful with. Um, right before that Chevron tank died, I did a test of the tank, and it was 
just maybe a tinge of ammonia in there. It had been like eight days since I'd done a water change in there. So for me, that's effective, but I was wondering if other people have tried it and how that's working out for them. <clears throat> so I'd like to see those in the comments if anybody has any comments on that. That's a really good question, and that's something I wanted to ask you about. Um, so my quarantine tank, and pretty much everybody, for the most part, has their quarantine tank empty, glass bottom, no rock, just some PVC pipe so the fish can hide in it and chill out. Yep. You need that. So then you say that you use a sand bed. Yep. For a very good reason, and I'm thinking about actually doing that because I love that idea, but I'm wondering... Do you think that will affect the destruction of the ick? Because you know, what is it called? The tomites? Right. Yep. When they come off the fish after five to seven days, they eject themselves and they burrow in the sand in the uh, cyst, and they'll stay in there up until about 28 days. And then they launch again with thousands of more, thousands of more, that's great <laughs> yeah. grammar, uh, parasites to look for more of a food source, more fish. So... I wonder if it's better to not have sand so the eggs can't encrust in the sand bed, or does it not matter, do you think? You know, I don't know. Um, you might be able to get the same results using, like, a hang-on-back filter with a, um, some sort of media back there, so that might get you where you want to be. But my guess is if you don't have it going in, you don't have to worry about it, and if you right. do have it, and you're going to dose copper, right? Then it, and the copper is going to kill it. I know you dose copper to begin with. I yeah. don't do that. I'm kind of the opposite. Of course, now I wonder if I would have dosed copper day one. Would that have stopped the marine velvet? Or it, it, I don't know. It probably would have unless maybe it's, uh, it was just something else. But, yeah, but, you know, with tangs, they're always a little stressed out by the right, copper. Right. It's always a hard process. So it's it's hard to know what would have worked. What That's right. Work. Because too much copper will really harm the fish and de yep. destroy its kidneys. Too little copper, we're talking about a really fine line here, too little yep. copper really won't have much of an effect on the, the parasites. So I tend to do a little less than what the dosage calls for because I want to be more gentle to the fish and give them like a, a light copper bath. That's what a lot of the reef stores do, supposedly. Yep. Um and then after a few days, I'll, I'll hit them with the full force of copper and do that for about a week and a half and then let them chill out with no copper. I like your idea of um, just putting them in the tank and just letting them chill out and be all calm and not have any copper in there and uh, let them relax. Let me get this guy off me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just hard to know what would actually work. Um, here's where I wish there was real science in the hobby to really push this in the right direction, right? But Yeah, I know. But we know to kill Ick, you got to do the quarantine thing. At least we've got yeah, that. So guess what? We're at 28 minutes right now. Woohoo! Look at that. Well, I think this is a pretty good first show. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was pretty good. You guys, I guess we should probably cut it here. Um, yep. because it's 28 minutes, 28 and a half minutes. And hopefully you guys watched the whole thing. We kind of got carried away. Scott and I were talking yep. beforehand saying, let's make it five, maybe 10 minutes. Well, that didn't work out. So, you know, it, it is longer. That's what she said. I didn't know if we're going to do that's what she said in the show, but I, I had to. I, How can you not? Okay, good. So, <laughs> so, okay. So the plan is to do these shows. It's cool to talk and hang out with Scott and we learn from each other. And you guys, I'm sure, enjoy watching other people talk and debate. Please comment. And, hey, if you want to be on the show, if you've got access to Skype, you know, you just need an Internet connection. It's really easy to do. A uh, simple microphone will be fine, or even the microphone on your laptop is great. Um, we'd love to have you on. Uh, you have ideas for the show. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we'd love to know what subjects you want covered. That'd be great. Yeah, let us know what subjects you want covered. If you think of it, we'd love to have you on the show with us. And, uh, you know, we'll see how this goes. 